Today we have the Ride One Up Rev One hardtail moped style e-bike and we're gonna review it. As some of you know, I made a little analysis video on this bike comparing the hardtail to the softtail. Some of the main differences between the two is the hardtail is about $500 less, but they are both 52 volt bikes. And because it is less money, the hardtail version has a little bit smaller battery and the controller is 25 amps instead of 28 amps. And speaking of saving money, I do have a coupon code below this video in the description box. You'd use that coupon code to save you some money while also supporting this channel. I've had a request for the return of the hatchet. It's really a terrible way to open a bike. Hopefully that didn't damage anything. The hardtail weighs 83 pounds, 10 pounds less than the full suspension version of this bike. And one of the first things I'm noticing about this bike is it has two piece rotors. This is definitely a step above the typical rotors I see on these moped style bikes. And it also has mag wheels, which definitely adds a little bit of weight compared to spoke wheels. They are buffeting brand. Kenda tires, typical knobby tread pattern. And of course they are 20 by four inch. We also get a box, owner's manual, beanie. Let's check out this charger. Three amp charger. Here's the pedals, keys. Let's check out the battery. 52 volt, 15 amp hour, 780 watt hours of energy. This is a little bit smaller than the full suspension version, which gets a 20 amp hour battery. One benefit of that is this battery is lighter. I recommend you charge while you build. We get rubber round hand grips, basic controls. Let's turn that on in just a moment. Quarter twist throttle, low beam, high beam, horn. And here's what the hydraulic brake levers look like. Front wheels on. There are no gears on this bike. Metal fenders. Here's the headlight. Does not rotate with the tire. Another subtle difference between the hardtail versus the full suspension is the fork. The fork on the hardtail has 100 millimeters of travel versus 120 on the full suspension. Also, this is not a dual crown fork on the hardtail. Again, it's saving you a little bit of weight. And also, generally, you can turn the handlebars a lot further on these non dual crown forks. You do get adjustments with clicks on this fork. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but the controller is likely down here, which is a 25 amp controller on this bike versus 28 amps on the full suspension version. And obviously the hardtail just doesn't have the suspension back here, saving you a little bit of weight, but that is gonna affect the ride feel. Speaking of ride feel, this is what the seat looks like, a fairly soft material, long seat. Quick look at the hub motor. This is what the label says on it. Yes, green light means this back battery is charged. One thing that makes this frame design stand out is how it protects the battery in the case the bike were to tip over for some reason. All right, let's turn this thing on. Look at that display. Cool effect. All right, so we get a simple and beautiful display. Pedelec shows us our full battery, miles per hour, front and center, max speed, pedal assist levels, which five is the max it starts out on, can drop it to zero. USB popped up there. Oh, so that's turning on and off the USB thing. Headlight on and off. Oh, and then we have our high beam, low beam option. Let's try the horn. That is a loud horn. <laughs> high beam headlight, low beam, and center. The camera does not show you how bright this tail light is. It's very bright. Let's see if it's a brake light. Yes, it does. It's a brake light as well. All right, let's take the ride one up, rev one out for a ride. Get the headlight, get this sticker off here. And I just love this little startup screen. So this bike is not unlocked, but we'll unlock it in a moment. And to start this review off, we're gonna do the 20% grade hill climb on the stock settings. This bike is not unlocked completely yet, but wide open throttle, pedal assist five, ready, go. See what kind of torque it has before we unlock it from a stop, climbing the 20% hill grade under its own power, no problem. So this bike does have torque. So one significant difference on the hardtail version compared to the full suspension version of the Rev1 is the weight. So this hardtail version actually weighs 10 pounds less. And that's because of mostly probably the battery's a little bit smaller and because there is no rear suspension, it's just a lighter rear end. So I'm gonna start the Strava now so we can see what kind of range we get out of today's ride. And I will be unlocking this bike's full potential in just a moment, but before we do that, we're gonna do a couple of zero to top speed runs and just see what kind of performance the bike can do before we unlock it. So this is the hardtail version. I'm six foot five, I weigh 200 pounds. We're gonna do zero to top speed. Ready, go. Motor's not unlocked yet, but this thing, it's got some power right off the line. A Little bit of headwind and two, 
it slows it down right before 20. And we're gonna go ahead and run it back the other way just for the sake of wind. Ready, go. 15 and 20 basically. Like I can feel the power cuts off right before I hit 20. This thing gets up to 20 pretty darn quick. GT350. I just wanna talk you through this acceleration. Uh, ready, go. So power kicks on immediately. You feel the torque, very strong. And then right around 15, 16, 17, now the power is like reducing right now. So you can actually see how much power is being output right there. Powerful, powerful, powerful power, 15, 17. And then you can see it taper off right before 20. And the speedometer is dead on with the GPS. And before we modify anything, let's go ahead and just try the pedal assist. So if you have it on zero, the bike does not help you at all. The throttle does work on pedal assist zero. And starting from a stop with no gears on flat ground, it's, uh, let's get it. Oh, is that another GT350? These things are just everywhere, apparently. So pedal assist one, here's kind of what my cadence is looking like. It gives you, you know, a little bit, a little bit of pedal assistance. Cruising at about 13 miles an hour. I mean, it feels like a decent natural cadence. So you can actually, you know, pedal this thing a little bit for sure to give it some uh, assistance. Pumping it on to pedal assist two, you feel a little boost in that power assistance level. Let's see what it'll take us to. Oh, this thing's got good handles. Low to the ground, pedal assist two, tops you out, starts tapering off the power a little bit around. Basically top speed of like almost 20, we're at 18. So let's try pedal assist three, cruising at about 11 or so full power this should bring us all the way up to 20 and it's like a normal i mean this is about as fast as you can pedal this bike 20 miles an hour your legs are starting to turn fairly quickly so now pedal assist four or five does really no additional power input over three or four compared to three or four and now pedal assist five from a stop let's see what happens if we just start pedaling from a stop power is kicking in feel it taking us up to speed and then right at 20 it cuts your power off you could maybe pedal it a little faster than 20 but you're on your own okay so that was fun but now what we're gonna do is unlock the top speed on this bike and see how much faster it can go and if it adds any acceleration or if it adds any additional hill climbing ability and really how just the stock bike compares to the unlocked bike all right everything's in off-road mode now can't notice a difference in torque right away Ooh, that hardtail. Okay, so now everything's unlocked. We're in off-road mode. Wide open path here. No cars, no people around. I'm gonna try zero to top speed. I am 200 pounds. Ready, go. Acceleration feels about the same-ish. Headwind, 15, 20, and we're powered beyond 20 now. It just keeps pulling. 25. And it's pretty strong headwind. We'll turn around. And now let's run it back the other way just to verify top speed. Twenty. Twenty five. Twenty eight. Thirty. Thirty one. Thirty two. Put my phone away. Speed bump. <laughs> Should we race the BMW? I don't think we can win. Ready, go. 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, 32, 33. Looks like it's toughed me out right around 33 at 200 pounds. So we're gonna get out for a ride down to the beach and try some other tests, like some other hill climbing, brake test, and just talk about how the bike handles and performs. This thing feels like a little mini motorcycle. Well, one benefit of the hardtail is since it does not have that uh, dual crown fork, you can turn this wheel quite a bit more. Now I did not try the dual crown fork one, but I'd imagine this one would have a much uh, sharper turning radius compared to the dual crown fork full suspension bike. So we're gonna do the 20% grade hill test one more time with off-road mode and just see um, if it changes the performance whatsoever. So I still, hey, 200 pounds, ready, go. 
and it feels exactly the same. It's just pulling me right on up. So I want to see if the pedal assists are any different. Uh, we're on pedal assist two, pedal assist three. So pretty much once you get to like 21, that's about as fast as you can like really pedal this thing. I definitely like this display. A lot of times when I wear my sunglasses, it's hard for me to see the display. This one, I guess you totally fine with my sunglasses on. Feels just like a little mini motorcycle. Handles nicely. So just like all of these moped style bikes, I'm probably not gonna be pedaling much. Let's try and take it off road real quick. Ugh. So the full suspension versus hardtail is gonna have to be something that you decide you know do you want that lighter weight bike or do you really want that full suspension and of course the battery size difference you know i can feel like just a little imperfections in this little sidewalk here being that this is not a full suspension bike however it does cost 500 dollars less it's about 25 percent smaller battery personally if you guys watch my channel you know i prefer full suspension bikes however in my younger days i probably would have not cared so much about full suspension coming around the corner here Ugh. so if you're thinking about getting a rev one and trying to make up your mind between the hardtail or the full suspension i mean i guess it really just depends on where you're gonna ride it how you're gonna ride it you're gonna be going off road and ugh, doing stuff like this i'd recommend you go with the full suspension because that feels pretty harsh to me honestly you know maybe if i was a little younger or i felt like getting up on the pedals and using my legs as suspension when I'm off-road. I might feel a little differently about that. But, you know, if you're riding on just concrete or bike trails, cruising like this feels just fine with those four inch thick knobby tires. Now, does it feel as good as full suspension? Of course not. And since I do weigh 200 pounds, having a little bit bigger battery and also a slightly stronger controller might be a little bit more beneficial to me. We'll see what kind of range I end up getting on this. But in general, when you have more power on tap, you kind of tend to burn through battery just a little bit quicker. So I always kind of prefer to have a bigger battery, especially since me personally, I'm just carrying around more weight. So maybe like your weight might be a factor in considering uh, which bike to get. So let's get out here on this little boardwalk in the sand and see how the Rev1 performs. Uh, definitely can feel the bumps. See how it does off of the sand. Uh, whoa, yeah. Definitely got enough power. Four inch wide tires can get us on through. Four inch wide knobby tires give us nice traction. And of course, got the fenders on there so we're not getting hit with sand. We will not be riding in the water today. All right, let's go up the hill. See what kind of speed we can maintain off-road here and the rev one is actually uh not quite doing it not quite doing it not the hardtail version anyway i don't know if the controller's kind of giving out on me or what and it's hard to give it any pedal power here with no gears so right now this would be a good time to have some gears <sighs> controller is not giving me the power i need here surprising all right easing on the throttle now it's cutting out on me a little bit Oh, here we go. No, no, no. It's not giving me power. Oh, you know what? I have it on pedal assist one, but that shouldn't make a difference. Put it, now it's on pedal assist five. You can see it's limiting my power, and it's because I think the speed I'm at, it doesn't, it's not going to give me full power because I'm at a slower speed. So I think we got to give it like a little bit of a running start here. Go, 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 go. Nope, nope, nope. It's not giving me full power. I guess I'll just uh, kind of push it along oh now it's giving me full power because we're above like five miles an hour so you just i think you just can't let it get going slower than like five because it won't give you full power then all right let's try this again we're gonna roll out here at about five and keep it going faster than five so it's giving me full power full power full power full power full power full power but then now i'm getting down to like six five four and i was cutting power three uh it's giving me full power at three miles an hour it says now it's, it's done like once you get below like three miles an hour it doesn't want to give you full power anymore all right we're we're cranking though now so i'm a little surprised that it's not like just killing it going up that hill based on the performance i've seen so far now i'm giving it uh wide open throttle in the off-road mode and 
We're about 18 miles an hour. Let's try and go up this hill now, holding a little more speed. No, no, it's not doing it. It doesn't like this. All right. I mean, it, it's, it's giving me, all right, there, now it's going. So I have to say, this is not like the strongest performing um, bike I've ever tried off-roading in the sand. I should probably ease off the controller here soon because I'm pushing this thing really, really hard right now. Once it's back here on the boardwalk, we're good. So I'd have to say at this point in the review, when I initially saw the specs for this bike online, I was super impressed with the full suspension specs. Now I have the hardtail version here. Um, the controller is a little bit less amps. I think it's like three amps less. So full suspension, they give you the 28 amp controller. This is 25 amp controller. And then you get a bigger battery on the full suspension one too. And, but it does cost 500 bucks more. So, I mean, there's trade-offs. There's trade-offs there. At this point in the review though, I think that I would go with the full suspension version of this bike. Cause I think this thing looks sick and it's a blast. But for me personally, at my weight of 200 pounds and just knowing how I like to go fast, I would just want a little bit more range and a little bit more comfort for that extra 500 bones. To talk about the comfort on this bike, um, it's comfortable. I actually like the seat on it. It's a little bit of a narrow seat, but it's comfortable. Man, there's a dark looking cloud up here. I, it's gotta be like raining over there in Santa Monica and Beverly Hills and stuff. But check it out. Like if we turn around, check it out behind us here. It's like straight up blue skies over here. And then over here, it's like a freaking storm. Interesting, we're about to lose sun. Let's try this hill. We're on about uh, four out of five battery bars right now. Rolling into this at 12 miles an hour, full throttle now. Let's see how it holds up after taking a little bit of abuse out here. So we're holding pretty much 11 miles an hour and this is pretty strong hill climbing ability. So this bike does better than most bikes climbing hills. Most bikes that I review on this channel of a uh, similar price point, similar style. So we are 12 and a half miles into this ride, hour and nine minutes of <laughs> pretty harsh riding on this bike so far. And we are four out of five battery bars. Dude, it looks like I'm riding straight into some sort of rainstorm up here. But the weather forecast says it's gonna like turn around and go away. Uh, I guess I'll find out what happens. I just wanna do a little brake test here and the California incline, hopefully not get rain out. All right, we're gonna do a couple of brake tests here from 20, see how these brakes perform. I'll tell you about the levers here in just a moment. They're hydraulic disc brakes, floating rotors. The brake test. Yeah, great brakes. Front tire like locked up. Wow, look at that. Skid marks on the front and the back. So these things are strong enough to uh, slow the bike down for show. All right, one more brake test from about 20 and three. Yeah brakes are very very good so these brakes are really good they're not like my favorite brake levers they don't feel like the actual levers don't feel excellent in my hand but in terms of the stopping performance they are capable of locking up both the front and rear tire so pretty much the only limitation to your braking is traction from the tire to the to the ground and ultimately that's about the best stopping power you can ask for from brakes additionally these do have floating rotors so they're going to perform better over like a long period of time like braking for a long distance the rotors do expand and contract with heat so the floating rotor allows them to expand and contract a little bit without warping this is absolutely horrible news i'm feeling sprinkles coming down but we have to finish this review and do the california incline gotta see what this bike can do after struggling on the sand give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the dedication all right so going into the loop-de-loop -loop here pedal says five throttle only let's see how it does it's just going right up the hill totally fine and this is the steep portion of the California incline. Pretty much dominating it, yeah. I mean, find it interesting how it kind of struggled in the sand back there at slow speed, but like hills, it has no problem with. Coming around. So California incline from a stop here. Uh, ready, go. Full power, it's giving me full power. Let's see what kind of speed we can hit going up this. 7% grade, long gradual incline, getting up to 15, 17. 18 so it's doing better than most bikes i can tell already most bikes won't even hit uh, 18 or 19 by the time we're at the top 
and we're at 20 already like halfway through it so pretty legit performance here on the rev one hardtail the soft tail i'm sure would probably perform a little better at the top so for those of you who are new to the channel we were just down there on that bike path interesting mix of weather here just nothing but blue skies and sunshine ocean mountains and storm pretty much so going down a hill like this is when the two-piece rotors come in handy because over a long distance, if you keep using your brakes, that's how they heat up. A single piece rotor will warp because it can expand and contract like a two piece rotor can. Not many bikes I review have two piece rotors, but this is one of them. So the horn on this thing's pretty loud. Thunder. It's like the second time I've ever heard thunder here. Well, that's not another tornado coming for LA. There's just a tornado here. Is that some sort of special cloud there, like a funnel cloud or something? I think we gotta get out of here. So despite all of my complaints about the lack of full suspension on this bike, I'm actually having a blast out here. This thing rides great. Just like a little mini motorcycle. I am thoroughly enjoying the ride. Dude, this funnel cloud thing looking back here though, it's like trippy, like this dude's over here filming it. I think everybody just kind of looking up at it like, what is what is this oh yeah you can't even see the mountains anymore there's some serious rain coming we're like passing a real motorcycle right now don't look at that I'm taking the streets home we gotta get out of this rain this is one benefit of uh two wheels stuck in the rain well if you want to know if the bike works in the rain that's typically a question i cannot answer we're going i can tell you know the battery's getting pretty low two out of five bars i can tell you know it's, it's not accelerating me like it was before freaking pouring out here all right guys so final thoughts on the ride one up rev one hardtail i got absolutely rained out out there but everything cleared up it's about 30 minutes later now and today i did 22.13 miles and had one hour and 47 minutes of moving time and looking at the dash here i have two out of five bars remaining so on the way back, I was getting rained out and trying to outrun that storm. So let me put it this way. I was riding this thing in off-road mode on private roads. Pretty much I was maxing it out pretty much the whole ride home. And when you weigh 200 pounds and you're going at high speeds, you're gonna run out of battery fast. So I did thoroughly enjoy riding this bike. And I think that this bike is particularly stylish. It's a good looking bike. So if you're looking at getting one of these, you're probably wondering if you should get the hardtail or the full suspension. Now, of course there are some trade-offs there. I mean, the hardtail is 500 bucks cheaper and it's also 10 pounds lighter and the controller is just a little bit weaker at 25 amps instead of 28 amps. And a big part of that weight reduction is the battery is 25% smaller than the full suspension. And of course, since you don't have the rear suspension, you save a little weight. So I guess really it's just trade-offs. You have to decide what you want and what you're okay with living with. Personally, if I was going to be riding this bike as my main daily rider bike, I would get the full suspension for two main reasons. One, I just love my full suspension. You guys know that. If you watch this channel, you know I love full suspension moped style e-bikes. Now, if I was a little bit younger, younger version of me, I'd probably be all right with the hardtail. However, that is not the case for me. I just appreciate my full suspension. And also, since I do weigh 200 pounds and I like to ride fast, I just really appreciate a larger battery. And not to say this bike isn't powerful because this thing got me up to some pretty good top speeds. So the truth is, I really don't know what to tell you what to do, but I do think this bike is awesome. I had a great time on it today. And if you're thinking about getting one, I'd say go for it. I do have a discount code below this video in the description box. So if you want to grab one, save yourself some money and also help support my reviews on this channel, you can use the link below this video and buy through that link and use my discount code. However, if this is not the bike for you, you can watch this video here next. Thanks for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up, drop a comment, catch you next time.